July 23rd. I have a really big box, but it's not a wakeboard. How do I open it? It's quite mangled. We shall get inside it. Yeah. yeah, paper in this bag or box. Yeah. yeah. A lot. This is the weirdest wakeboard I have ever seen. This is the start of a new aspect of our channel. We wakeboard, so we figured snowboarding is pretty similar. We want to get into that, so I went ahead and bought myself a snowboard. It is a Rosignol District, and it is 156 centimeters long and the wide version. I bought this board because it's the summer and snowboards are really cheap right now, and it fit a lot of the categories I was looking for in a snowboard. It actually says them on the board right here, so I'll show you guys that. The main thing about this board is that it is a park to all mountain type of board, but more oriented for the park which is the kind of riding that I think I'll be doing the most. The one time that I had gone snowboarding before, that's where I spent most of my time. I want a board that'll keep me prepared for that. Another thing on the sticker is that its flex is at a three out of 10. The board that I rented when I went that first time was super soft and I didn't like how flexible that was. So I wanted a board that was a bit more stiff than nothing at all, but I didn't want a board that is crazy stiff because that's not the freestyle type writing or the park type writing that I want to do. Another thing, you might not be able to see it on here, but the flex pattern of the board is mostly rocker with a little bit of camber in the middle. That's money for me. Rocker really helped not catch edges and that's more for park writing, but I did want some camber and some response for if I'm going down crazy trails on the mountain. So that high rib shape, exactly what I wanted it for. The other key thing is that it is a wide board. It's 156 centimeters wide. And that's because I wanted to play it safe in terms of my bindings and the boots. My foot size is around 10 and a half to 11, which means I would need large bindings. I don't know if those would hang off the board on a narrow board or a regular board. So I wanted to play it safe. I could be wrong. Please let me know in the comments if I would have been able to but I'd rather be safe than sorry in terms of this. Probably the most important thing about this board, and the real reason that I chose it over many other boards, is that it's a true twin shape. It's fully the same shape going both ways on the tip and the tail. This is a little bit of personal preference. I think it'll be pretty similar to a wakeboard in that aspect. I want it to be able to progress in terms of regular and switch equally while I'm snowboarding as well. The fact that it is a true twin really sold me. Now I obviously won't be able to ride this right away. One, because there's no snow out, and two, because the ACL is still under rehab. By the time that's done, which should be around December to January-ish, I should be able to go out and start riding this thing. Don't worry, it will get its use. If you want to see me unbox the bindings and the boots, make sure you stay tuned because those videos are coming soon. As for the board, that's gonna be it for the unboxing of it. If you guys liked it, make sure you leave a like and you subscribe for more wakeboarding and snowboarding content to come in the future. And leave a comment letting us know a little bit more about snowboarding. We're a little bit new to it. So any tips you guys can give us in terms of snowboarding, we will absolutely take them. But thanks for watching and we'll see you guys on the next video. Peace.